Tonight, I'll take you through my entire process of photographing a jaw-dropping nebula known as Thor's Helmet. As usual, there will be a number of challenges in my way, but it wouldn't be a night of astrophotography without a little bit of stress, now would it? I'm using an astrophotography setup I haven't used in a while, and I think you'll get some great tips for your next project if you follow along. So thank you for coming along for another night of deep sky astrophotography in the backyard, and I hope you stick around to the end of the video for the final image reveal. I don't know about you guys, but plans with friends or family always seem to happen on a clear night. Seriously, what's with that? I mean, talk about feeling guilty. Of course, I wanna see my family and friends, but in the back of your mind, you're going a little bit crazy thinking about those precious clear skies you're missing out on. My solution, work around those plans. Don't try to cancel on your friends and family and tell them that, sorry guys, I can't hang out because the astrophoric forecast looks great for tonight. It doesn't work. For example, tonight I have a family dinner I need to attend on Ashley's side and it's gonna be clear tonight. So what I'm doing is preparing absolutely everything I can here at home so I can get up and running quickly when I get home at, are we coming home at nine? 9 9.30. Even the target I've selected to photograph tonight was chosen with this dinner in mind. Thor's helmet won't rise above the roof of my house until 8 p.m. anyway. It's almost too perfect. There, Rudy sprained his little paw on the ice this morning. Didn't you, buddy? Yeah, he slipped in the ice and now he can't put pressure on his left paw. It'll feel better soon, buddy. I feel so bad. It's slippery out there, buddy. Have you ever captured Thor's Helmet Nebula before? It's a real showstopper. It's the perfect choice for a cold February night. Because this nebula emits a healthy amount of signal or light in the hydrogen and oxygen band passes, it's a great target to shoot on a night when the moon is out. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere like me, somewhere in the mid-Northern latitudes, you might need to get somewhere with a low horizon to catch this one. Luckily, my view to the south isn't too bad here in the backyard, and I'm able to track and photograph Thor's helmet as it reaches its peak of about 30 degrees in apparent altitude. You'll find this nebula in the constellation Canis Major, which is easy to point out thanks to the brightest star in the night sky, Sirius, near the head of the great dog. This constellation follows alongside Orion and comes out a little later on throughout the night. Another nebula target that you should think about shooting as Orion's on its way out this month is the Seagull Nebula. This one's also in Canis Major, very close by, but it's a lot larger, so it's a better choice for focal lengths of about 500 millimeters and wider. I'm using my super old laptop to run tonight's imaging session. It's one that I bought on Amazon, refurbished for like 300 bucks a few years ago. 11.5 inches of laggy, still working on it, Windows performance. God bless this little bugger, he's doing the best he can. Even though this Lenovo ThinkPad wasn't designed to operate in minus 10 degrees Celsius weather, he does anyway. Most of the time. I have plenty of other options to run my astrophotography gear, but there's a reason I'm using this old Lunker to run this session tonight. It has all the software and drivers needed to run this specific camera, filter wheel, and guide camera. The process of getting this Starlight Express CCD camera to be recognized and to operate smoothly took some serious trial and error, and I am not going through that again. So this is my dedicated Starlight Express Tria 694 mono laptop. I'll know that it's ready to go when I get home tonight. No surprises. I'm not even going to install the latest update to PhD2 guiding in case something goes haywire. I'm not falling for that one again. Nice try. You may have even noticed that this rig has been sitting out here for much of the year. I put a Telegizmos 365 cover on it to protect it from the elements. Wrapping a setup like this up for an extended period of time makes a lot of sense because it's so heavy and cumbersome. This isn't the type of rig you want to be hauling in and out of the garage time after time. I could have made my life a lot easier by just shooting this deep sky target from the observatory, but it doesn't have the focal length that I need. The Esprit 150 
and SX42 camera create the absolute perfect framing for this target. Thor's Helmet Nebula is actually quite small and I recommend shooting it at at least a thousand millimeters of focal length or above. Now with that being said, I am using a reducer on this telescope, a dedicated 0.77 times reducer for the Esprit 150 that not only improves my image scale a touch, but also lets me collect a little bit light in each exposure. Thor's Helmet is a perfect narrow band astrophotography project, particularly in the HA and O3 to create a bi-color image. This color palette allows you to create a blue and red version of the image, and I just absolutely love the look of it. Since I have very limited time tonight with more snow on the way, I'm going to go ahead and collect the hydrogen and oxygen filter details all in one night. My goal is to capture at least two hours of that all-important HA signal and then dedicate the rest of the night to O3. I'll stick to five minute exposures with this camera through the six nanometer astronomic filters in the filter wheel. I shot six minute subs with this system last time on this object, but again, I'm using that reducer and I think five minutes will be the sweet spot this time. Using only the data I collect tonight would really be pushing it to actually complete an image of Thor's helmet. Thankfully, I've taken images of this nebula before using this system, and I can apply my previous data shot in 2020 to this one. I only captured about three hours of total exposure time last time, so hopefully with tonight's data, I can get the total integration up to more like five or six. It is 9.42, I'm back home, and my camera and telescope are tracking and photographing the Thor's Helmet Nebula in Canis Major. I had a look at that first five minute sub exposure as it came through just a minute ago and it looks so good. I'm so excited about this data. My images are at this camera's full resolution, binned one by one, and on this sensor, that's about 3,000 by 2,000 pixels. So not the biggest picture in the world, not nearly as big as some of the other camera sensors I use, but very high quality data with this CCD sensor. My image scale is about 1.1, so maybe a little on the soft side, but I'm really looking forward to processing it because it's fun to do some sharpening and post-processing. It's a little easier, I find, to sharpen an image than to get it uncrunchified, if that makes sense. I tried to get everything sorted out as best I could with the rig before I left for dinner so when I came back it would be smooth sailing. Unfortunately, that was not the case, it never is. This time it was the filter wheel. I could tell something was going wrong because every time I started up, instead of doing the normal process where it kind of spins around and it finds its position and it's a familiar sound I'm used to, it was just doing this weird clicking sound. I could tell something wasn't right. So I had to take the whole thing apart, unscrewed it and put it back together again, warmed it up. I think it was just cold. That was probably the issue as opposed to we have a bad cable or something. Put it back together, blew it off, plugged it back in and lo and behold, it started up again, making those familiar friendly sounds again. So always something to keep you on your toes this time it was the filter wheel but i'm glad it's up and running now here's a look at the data i collected last night 25 times five minute exposures in total all in h alpha by about 12 30 a.m the sky conditions got really hazy and i never did collect any o3 the massive meal i ate earlier was catching up to me and i felt like i was ready to drop this is what the stack out of deep sky stacker looks like and here it is with a quick stretch in adobe photoshop i didn't take any flat calibration frames this morning sometimes you can get away without doing them for narrow band images but as you can see, I really got lucky that none of these giant dust motes landed directly on my subject. Now I'll apply this data to my existing photos of Thor's helmet to hopefully produce my best version of this nebula yet. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the image and until next time, clear skies.